the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, from heaven who suffer for us, grace and peace be with you always. Good morning, everyone. If you ever needed proof of what the prophet Ezekiel says in today's first reading, that the water flowing from the temple brings nourishment and goodness to everywhere it flows, then just look at the comments after any mass in our diocese and beyond is broadcast to see that still there is a lot of goodness and nourishment flowing from the temple of the Lord, even although sadly our doors are closed. We place ourselves in God's presence, aware that we are the true temple, the dwelling place of Him who holds us in being. Lord, we are your people. Lord, have mercy. You feed us with your work and strengthen us in your ways. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with the gift of your own body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Let us pray. May you shape the hearts of your faithful people, Lord, to welcome worthily the celebration of Easter and to proclaim the praises of your salvation. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me to the entrance of the temple, for a stream came out from under the temple threshold and flowed eastwards, since the temple faced east. The water flowed from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He took me out by the north gate and led me right round outside, as far as the outer east gate, where the water flowed out on the right hand side. The man went to the east, holding his measuring line, and measured off a thousand cubits. He then made me wade across the stream. The water reached my ankles. He measured off another thousand, and made me wade across the stream again. The water reached my knees. He measured off another thousand and made me wade across again. The water reached my waist. He measured off another thousand. It was now a river I could not cross. The stream had swollen and was now deep water, a river impossible to cross. He then said, do you see, son of man? He took me further, then brought me back to the bank of the river. When I got back, there were many trees on each bank of the river. And he said, This water flows east, down to the Arba and to the sea. And flowing into the sea, it makes it, its waters wholesome. Wherever the river flows, all living creatures teeming in it will live. This will be very plentiful, for wherever the water goes, it brings health, and life teems wherever the water flows. Along the river on either bank will grow every kind of fruit tree, with leaves that never wither and fruit that never fails. They will bear new fruit every month, because this water comes from the sanctuary, and their fruit will be good to eat, and their leaves medicinal. The Word of the Lord 
The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. God is for us a refuge and strength, a helper close at hand in time of distress. So we shall not fear though the earth should rock, though the mountains fall into the depth of the sea. The waters of a river give joy to God's city, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within, it cannot be shaken. God will help it at the dawning of the day. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come, consider the works of the Lord, the redoubtable deeds he has done in the earth. When we look 
order for God to intervene in history, then we need to look only to God, directly and unashamedly. The crippled man found healing not in sensational waters, but in the effect of desire and word of God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. We offer to you, Lord, these gifts which you yourself have given us. May they attest to your care as our Creator for our mortal lives and effect in us the healing that brings us immortality. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your generosity. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. So that we're taking the 
the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, again he gave you thanks, and handing it to his disciples said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
you repeat after me the words of the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I can't at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be parted from you. Amen. Let us pray. Purify our minds, Lord, and renew them with your sacraments, that we may find help for our bodies now and in time to come. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the remainder of this week, at half past seven each evening, each of the men in our parish who are training for the permanent diaconate will take a turn of presenting a Lenten message to you, and that will be broadcast from their own homes at 7.30 each evening the remainder of this week. Because of the restrictions, I don't know how easy it's going to be to broadcast again from St. Lucy's, but be assured, if I can, I will. To Lord be my girl. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of